the topic given to me is chest x-ray is it still relevant in the current era or no so there's a picture which you all can see and we'll probably talk about this gentleman at the end of my conversation so without wasting time let us see what all am i going to cover in today's talk first is relevance second is basics and sequence of reading an x-ray third would be utility in short and then how is it a boon in emergency care so of course uh, i i hope that all of our radiology colleagues would agree that it is yet not an ancient science it continues to be a very sensitive tool in pulmonary diagnostics but it lacks specificity easily available cost effective and does hold a definitive role in emergency medicine especially in a country like ours where we have a developing scenario when to do a chest x ray so anyone who has cardinal symptoms of respiratory medicine be it cough breathlessness chest pain wheeze expectoration or hemoptysis there is an x ray which is warranted after trauma pre operative fitness or when we want to confirm certain positioning of lines and catheters or intercostal drains when we talk about basics in chest x ray i think the first thing i would want to tell all the colleagues that do not rush to diagnose please be systematic identify the abnormality analyze the pattern very well give a differential diagnosis and then if you feel that there is a need of an additional investigation go ahead to confirm so what do i mean by being systematic i would want you all to follow a particular pattern any time you see a chest x ray first try and identify is it for the same person you are trying to help second is that we start with the area under a normal x ray film so you must have vertically the lower half of neck included and the upper half of abdomen transversely it must uh, cover the costophrenic angles on both the sides along with the soft tissue shadows coming to the views so there are multiple views which we can uh, take the most common one which we use is a pa view where we see the anterior structures commonly then there is ap view which is done mostly in the icus or for children or for people who cannot hold breath or cannot be shifted down to the radiology departments and for visualization of posteriorly placed spine lateral view definitely helps us to visualize the retrosternal and retrocardiac space but rest of the views they were used more when we did not have an hrct now talking about the exposure so before you jump to diagnosis it's extremely important to understand that what are your basics which you visualize in the x ray so in the middle i have put up a normal exposure where you should be able to see intervertebral disc spaces faintly enough on the left side you have an underexposed film where you can over diagnose pulmonary edema or interstitial problems on the extreme right you can see a over exposed film where you have more of hyperlucency and you may misdiagnose a pneumothorax so understand the exposure before you comment on the diagnosis talking about the positioning so when we talk about a central x-ray film on the left side you can see that there should be an equal distance from the central airway between the two medial end of the clavicle when we see a rotated film we should be extremely cautious to comment on any volume loss pathology so wherever you have the closeness on the side of the medial end of the clavicle we say that it's a left anterior rotation in the current film normally what we see is an inspiratory film which is an ideal film to comment on a lung parenchyma the down one is an expiratory film where you all can see very well that you have an apparent cardiomegaly you have bilaterally raised diaphragm there is a crowding in the bases so of course you can misdiagnose say pleural effusion pulmonary edema interstitial changes so you should be careful now there are certain scenarios where we want an expiratory film like a pneumothorax or a bulla in the air a bulla in the lung where after expiration the area with the air gets enhanced pneumothorax after you have taken care of all these preliminary steps then we come to pathology so either you read the chest x ray from outside to inside or from inside to outside so from outside soft tissue shadows bones parenchyma pleura and then heart and mediastinum understanding the 15 minutes i have i'm going to focus on these three things and we start with soft tissues so most of these things you can actually diagnose at level of x ray as well so let's start one by one you all can see the air in the subcutaneous tissue also known as surgical emphysema subcutaneous emphysema very well visualized on the chest x ray subcutaneous calcification you can see these blotchy white patches which extend beyond the thoracic cavity into the soft tissue area as well these are all the calcification typically used to be visualized with the asbestosis exposure so now we see these x ray less often you can see the white cysty uh, cerci the cystic cirrhosis where you can see the larva again you can see the shadow not only inside the thoracic cavity but also outside the soft tissue 
nice white well defined uh, pellets the shredded pellets which you can see so if you see in the lateral film you can very well see that it's not inside the thoracic cavity they are predominantly into the subcutaneous tissue and classical for pellets here you can see on the right side you do not have a breast shadow so that's a case of mastectomy and it can be an exam x-ray and you cannot miss this on x-ray enough you do not need a scan for this however when when i say that uh, we are going ahead with the next one so here you can see a breast shadow which is very well defined unusual to a normal x-ray film but you need a ct scan most of the time to confirm that you have an artificial silicone breast placed coming to the bony case so you have clavicle ribs scapula and spine which you can visualize rotation fractures erosions lytic lesions or rib destructions and notching usually on a an x-ray level the clavicles and the ribs are very well visualized so here on the left side you can see a fractured clavicle on the right side you can see these nice uh, hyperlucent punched out lesions typical of multiple myeloma on the left x-ray you have a right you have a left sided single unilateral cervical rib which you can visualize and on the right side you can see bilateral cervical ribs again you do not need a ct to confirm this x-ray is enough these are some post operative x-rays so left upper lobe lobectomy you can see a very nicely cut rib where on the left upper lobe this is an x-ray of lobectomy visible on the right side you have a thoracoplasty x-ray where you can see the compressed thoracic cavity on the upper zone this these x-rays are now getting obsolete because we have better surgical skills and better interventions to take care of the pathologies in the chest coming to lung parenchyma so you have myriads of things which you can see in the parenchyma uh we cannot we won't be able to go through all of them but definitely yes anything you see in the parenchyma try and talk about the nature of opacity in homogeneous homogeneous opacities we will be going quickly to the localization of the opacity more in this lecture so as you can see from left to right uh, the blue area is the demarcated lobe and i have tried to put up on the pa view and on the lateral view so we need to understand that lateral x ray films are extremely important when i want to localize my film and we'll know why so as you can see the right upper lobe area on the lateral film you can see a nicely apical area which is cut up and the margins when we talk about right middle lobe we are talking about the right side mid zone and the lower zone involvement and like a wedge shaped opacity on the lateral film right lower lobe would have an overlap area with the right upper lobe as you can see the area where we have a representative area so if you look at the lateral films you can very well demarcate the lobes coming to the left side the whole of the left side can have an opacity on the upper lobe if you have if you're seeing a shadow on the x-ray but when you do the lateral film you can very nicely demarcate upper lobe or lower lobe so when we want to localize anything on the chest x-ray level we cannot forget the sign which is selhausen given by felsen where the objects who have two similar radiographic density and they touch each other the margin or the edge between them disappears beautifully now coming to the x-ray on the left side down you can see that the cardiac borders on the left side they sell out with the lingular lobe of lung and on the right side they sell out with the right middle lobe so you cannot appreciate the margin of cardiac borders on the left side that's why this is a lingular pathology visible on the right side you are seeing a lower zone shadow which also has a cardiac border defined so it becomes a left lower lobe pathology these are some signs of collapse which as a student we all must know so the direct signs of collapse you have a displacement of interlobar fissure the most reliable one you have loss of aeration you have vascular and the bronchial markings being crowded all of the indirect signs of collapse are basically compensatory changes due to volume loss let's try and understand more so this is an upper lobe pathology where on the left side there is a consolidation nicely homogeneous shadow with the fissure being prominent but not shifted whereas the moment we talk about a collapse you have a fissure which is pulled up you have crowded uh, bronchovascular markings and you have loss of aeration similar thing you can see for the right middle lobe i told you that there will be a silhouetting present so you faintly can see the uh, the cardiac border on the right side so that's a consolidation visible when you talk about the collapse you will have a loss of volume in that area and shifting coming to the left lower lobe lower zone pathology you are not seeing any silhouetting sign the cardiac borders are prominent this is a lower lobe consolidation now look at the collapse of lower lobe so the outer boundary which you see is actually a cardiac border and the inner boundary this is the collapsed lung which has come inside coming to pleural pathology so you have fluid in the pleura or air in the pleura predominantly will be taking that up so on the left side you are seeing a pleural effusion which is a free fluid as you can see the nice ales curve 
Visible is on the right side. You have a pleural effusion, nice homogeneous opacity with a convexity inside. This is a loculated pleural effusion. When we talk about air in pleural space, we are talking about pneumothorax. You can see a silver lining demarcated by the arrows over here. This is the lung border. And whatever you see outside, which is hyperlucent without any air bronchogram, is the air and known as pneumothorax. Add a little water to it, and that's, become, that, that's what your hydropneumothorax looks like. This is transudative fluid, and there will be a straight line because of the margin between the air and the fluid. Now come to the intensive care. So we are talking about the emergency unit x-rays. You can see air under the diaphragm, okay? Now there are hostrations inside. You can see the, the division. This is what is chilidity and we need not panic. Look at any intestinal obstruction features, but you can stay still with this. Visible, look at this x-ray where you see free air under the diaphragm and this is what needs to be taken the attention for because it's a perforation of hollow viscera and you need to involve a surgeon. Now here you have a tension pneumothorax, a huge uh, hyperlucent cavity with a shift of mediastinum on the other side and small collapsed lung in the middle. This needs an urgent intercostal drain and this is how the lung starts to expand after the correction being done. And this is your intercostal drain. Massive pleural effusion, breathless patient, you can do an x-ray, figure it out, huge opacity, homogeneous completely pushing the mediastinum on the opposite side. Put an intercostal drain, the patient will be relieved of his symptoms and you have done your best. Coming to the lines and catheter, you can see a diagram that you, there is a hyperlucent trachea to start with. That's where it is. That's where your endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube should be visualized. Then there is a green demarcated esophagus and the stomach continued over there. Now, this is how your endotracheal tube in the nice position, two centimeters above carina should be looking. This is how your tracheostomy tubes look. The light green color is for the nasogastric tube going up to right in the fundus. So the radio opaque bulb should be visualized inside the fundus, not in the midway. Uh, here are some representative uh, features of your right subclavian catheter. That's where your colored line should be visualized on the x-ray. That's a subclavian line. And on the right extreme, you have an IJV line right coming straight from the top. So in the end, if I have to say that, how do you read your x-rays? Please follow the sequence. Don't be in a hurry. Identification of the right patient is extremely important. Area covered in the x-ray is important to comment on every part of it. View which view you're talking to understand that are you over in, are you over diagnosing or under diagnosing something? Exposure to avoid misdiagnosis. Centralized or rotated film talk about volume losses. Inspiratory, expiratory film again to not miss or not over diagnose things. Once you have ensured that what you're dealing with, then you go for a pathology hunt. Start either from outside to inside or inside to outside. So in the end, this is a picture of Aryabhatta, the famous mathematician from Indian uh, ancient science who contributed zero. So I would say that we have not yet left zero anywhere. So like zero, X-ray continues to be relevant. Thank you.